So it's not every day that a consumer drone pulls off something that scientists, filmmakers, and explorers dream of their entire lives. And while fans are celebrating, the US market is facing empty shelves, surprise leaks, and fierce competition, along with news about tools that we as creators use every day, showing that the market is still kind of doing its thing. So this is definitely an update that you're gonna to wanna to see, so let's jump in. So the fact that a consumer drone just climbed Mount Everest isn't news, it's history. The Mavic 4 Pro just pulled off a continuous flight filming every major step from North Gold Glacier right up to the summit at 29,032 feet or 8,849 meters. For some perspective, that's the cruising altitude of a 747 and it did it in the thin freezing air of the world's harshest environment. Now the route was mapped precisely, starting at over 21,000 feet at North Col, then flying through critical mountaineering points, Windy Pass, Camp 2, Camp 3, Yellow Band, and the infamous steps on Everest's spine. The drone footage not only brings viewers into the expedition, but it sets a new standard for high altitude cinematography. And if you're a filmmaker, seeing the climber's entire path from above with perfect stability is a shot that you just couldn't get before. Now, of course, it's not as simple as just hitting record. All those altitudes, the air is so thin and it's quite challenging to lift the drone. The batteries drain dramatically, the propellers easily ice up, and the temperatures potentially just kill the electronics. And based on what we've seen, it looks like DJI likely disabled the drone's elevation limiter to make this even possible and probably tuned the propeller speeds for extra lift, just like earlier Everest attempts with the Mavic 3. But it's not just the tech, the logistics were brutal. Carrying drones and batteries up Everest already takes grit. Operators had to launch and monitor their drone in gear design for frostbite with jet stream winds potentially one bad gust away from disaster. And it's a combination of pilot skill and serious engineering. With earlier missions like the Mavic 3 Summit flight and even Flycart 30, that delivered supplies at altitudes last year, DJI keeps proving what compact drones are capable of. Everest is a protected region with strict regulations, so if you're dreaming up your own high altitude mission, remember, compliance matters just as much as perfect. But the big story here is about the possibility. Consumer drones handling these kinds of extreme environments expands what's possible with science with these consumer devices, as well as filmmaking and even rescue. It could potentially be a wake up to pilots as a reminder that just because you can doesn't mean that you should, but there's no denying that this flight raises the stakes for every drone creator and has a lot of us rethinking what our drone footage could look like next season. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, is this cool or is it just overkill? But really quick, let's take a minute to talk about the sensor on the Mavic 4, 4 Pro. There's been some recent posts and information as people have gotten their hands on the drone, really gotten to dig in about the sensor and about its dual gain ISO build. Because I think once you see what's possible. Honestly, you might be surprised even if you're a veteran drone operator. So the Mavic 4 Pro has a dual gain ISO function and recent deep dives have revealed that it can measure up to 17.7 stops of dynamic range in D log M. It means that aerial shooters can get nearly cinema grade highlight and shadow retention from a drone that weighs about a kilo and can fold up and you can throw it in your backpack. So how does this work? So instead of the usual HDR methods, that can add kind of noise or muddiness to the shadows. DJI's dual gain ISO fusion leverages two sensor readouts. So it pulls off the sensor twice and merges those dynamically on all three lenses. And the results are brighter highlights, cleaner shadows, and detail where even traditional log or HDR profiles would start to fall apart. So Gerald Undone's tests and the Make Art Now demo make it pretty clear that the noise floor with the D-Log M profile almost outpacing the D-Log profile, which only comes in at 14.7 stops. So what does that mean from a practical standpoint as a creator? So let's talk about a sunset scene. Shot in D-Log M holds on to more color, more detail, more cloud detail, more edge highlights, more smooth sky gradients, even when overexposed. And this is a major win if you're a creator who shoots a lot in high contrast scenes like cityscapes, sunrises, snowy landscapes like Mount Everest, or where you might have blown highlights and crushed blacks. Maybe, I don't know, shooting a sunset over Oceanside Pier. 
But additionally, the workflow has been streamlined because the DLogM profile is easier to grade for enthusiasts, while pros still get the depth and control that they need. Even in high frame rates at 6K60 or 4K120, the performance holds up. The H.265 compression, the HEVC com compression, keeps the file sizes lean and the storage options with the 64 gig onboard and the 512 gigabyte onboard on the Creative Combo. So you're not limited by space. But here's the catch. The Mavic 4 Pro is 2,200 bucks in Europe, which is a strong value for that kind of tech. But the in the US, uh, buyers are hitting obstacles due to import customs, ongoing regulatory uncertainty, tariffs, and even if you have the opportunity to get one, you're likely gonna have to work through foreign resellers and probably pay a markup. So why has DJI been quiet about the sensor tech? Maybe it's strategic or maybe it's about building word of mouth organically. If you're prioritizing dynamic range, then dual game platforms like this make you rethink whether or not you need the bigger rig. And honestly, whether or not you even need the full log profile in the first place. Since something like this, a simple, honestly, simple folding one kilogram drone can give you 90% of what some of the pro gear would. For the pros in the audience, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on these numbers. Have you graded with D-Log M? Have you compared it to D-Log? What do you think? I wanna break into this video real quick to let you know that this video is sponsored by me. And unless I say otherwise, every video on this channel is backed by my photography business. Now YouTube ad revenue is nice, but it just, it doesn't keep the lights on. I'm a working professional photographer. And this is how I make a living. I specialize in portraits, family sessions, and photo and video work for small businesses. If you're in Las Vegas, Southern California, or really anywhere that you could fly me, and you need professional content that actually makes you look good, I am available. You'll find booking info and links down in the description. Now I did an entire video about shelves going empty here in the United States, but I just, I wanna, I wanna touch on it again one more time. We need to talk about what's happening here because if you've walked into a box store lately, your, your best buys and whatnots, you'll know that something is weird. DJI drones, including the new Mavic 4 Pro, are almost impossible to find in the US. Best Buy, Amazon, B&H, Adorama, you name it. If you want the latest DJI drone, the shelves are bare, carts are empty. And even older models like the Mavic 3 Pro are mostly gone. Now, DJI's official statement blames US Customs. Specifically, they're flagging drone imports over concerns tied to the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. We've talked about this before. The US government hasn't issued detailed comments and DJI firmly denies any manufacturing ties to restricted regions or forced labor claims. Meanwhile, tariffs and export controls are making component prices spike for US buyers. Retailers aren't saying much either. Best Buy denied dropping DJI, but a walk down their uh, drone aisle says otherwise. But what it comes down to is this. New product launches are skipping the US and DJI's support portal is warning of a 60 to 90 day repair timeline. For many, this feels like a lead into a deeper ban or just generally a slow market exit. DJI technically has less than six months to clear audits and avoid a de facto ban on all new hardware. Analysts expect that even if DJI maintains some SKUs in the US, older or refurbished models, the cutting edge stuff, may stay out of reach except through gray market importers with a much higher cost. So if you rely on DJI for pro work or even just as a hobbyist, the next six months are gonna be really interesting to watch. So what's your backup plan if DJI gets kicked out of the US market? I would love to hear what your brands or ideas are generally. Are we just gonna, I don't know, what are we gonna do? Shifting gears just a little bit, if you record audio on the go, you'll wanna keep an eye on this. So FCC filings have confirmed leaks of the upcoming DJI Mic 3, we've talked about that before. This marks the third mic release in just two years following the ProGrade Mic 2 and the budget Mic Mini. So what makes the Mic 3 different? Well, details are pointing to a redesigned receiver with a rounded squircle display and a new charging case. Refreshed hardware aimed at creators shooting run and gun content. The filings indicate an official reveal somewhere around late October this year, while specifics about improvements remain under wraps. Pattern recognition matters here. DJI has been on a blistering cycle with the Avada 3 drone, the Mini 5 Pro, the Neo 2. There's a ton rumored to come out here in the second half of 2025. But the bar is high. The Mic 2 set a standard for 250 meter range, noise cancellation, an upscale charging case. And the big standout was the 32-bit float recording and the dual safety track capture. So you can cover weddings, noisy markets, field interviews, anything without losing critical audio to clipping or interference. So the hope here is that the Mic 3 keeps all of those strengths, maybe with some better noise reduction, maybe some better, easier controls, 
plugs right into the rest of DJI's creative ecosystem. I think that's pretty much just like a given. And if you're deep into the Osmo or the drone workflow, the mic lineup has been pretty seamless to integrate. And I've got more news on other mic stuff, but real quick, I've got something special for anybody who's supporting me here on the channel. I have tools available for you exclusively for my YouTube members. I'm not selling these anywhere. They're only gonna be available to the folks who are subscribed and members of the channel, which by the way, is a dollar. So I've got a Lightroom preset pack, I've got a LUT cinema pack, and I've got some additional resources that I've been giving out to my members for free. So if you are a member, check the community comments section to get your free download. And if not, join right here and you'll get that as soon as it drops. So another story that's been picking up some traction is a recent entry from Insta360, DJI's like number one competitor in the action space, other than GoPro, into the audio game with what they're calling the Mic Air, which is a $49 wireless mic that's small, light, it basically vanishes when you plug it into your shirt. If you're tired of fiddling with bulky gear, this mic snaps on with a strong magnet and records at 48 hertz and brings noise cancellation with a removable windshield. But real quick, and, and I know that Insta360 is great and all that, and I'm gonna let him finish, but here's the deal. This is the Hollyland Lark M2. It is a tiny puck design. It also weighs 10 grams and it also has <laughs> it also has a magnetic back. But my even more favorite microphone than the Lark M2, which comes in this little charging case, is the Lark M2S, which is, I think, seven grams. It's mostly titanium. And instead of it being magnetic, it's just attached to. So you want to talk about tiny? That's tiny. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the Insta360. I'm just saying, if you're looking for a little microphone, check this guy out. And actually, I think it's even on a prime, like prime day deal sale. I'll put a link down in the description. Those things are awesome. But for $49, that is the lowest price for this type of microphone among the major players. And it looks like Insta360 is going after DJI and Rode. And before you ask, yes, I do have the Rode Wireless Goes. Um, I find them bulky, but they sound good. Now the Mic Air works not just with Insta360's flagship X5 camera. I'm sure it also works with the Peter McKinnon X4, but it's receiver free and plug and play. So it also works with the Ace Pro, their Flow gimbals, phones, laptops, anything really that you can attach via Bluetooth. And they do have a bundle that includes an additional receiver, which is $69. So you're basically paying 20 bucks for the receiver. It claims to have a 10 hour battery with a 300 meter line of sight, as well as remote control capabilities built in. So it can handle walk and talks, interviews, vlogs, live streams, doesn't need an adapter if you're already on the Insta360 hardware system. They also sell an ultimate creator bundle for $669 that includes the Mic Air, the X5, the selfie stick, and a fast reader for storage and charging. So it's kind of like a Mobile Creators 360 ready to shoot kit, and it comes with all of their editing software. But there are just a few trade-offs that I think I should mention. Number one, it is designed to work really well with the X5, but some users have noted that there is some hiss in extreme conditions. Older Insta360 cameras like the X3 won't work unless you get a firmware update first, and for non-Insta360 fans, you may need to juggle some dongles if you have legacy inputs. But to boil it all down, here's the deal. Insta360 isn't just a camera company anymore. They're building an ecosystem just like DJI. And honestly, I think the time might be coming pretty soon for them to consider dropping the Insta360 name or at least modifying it. Their name isn't even Insta360. The name of that company is actually Arashi Vision. And I think to be quite honest, the Insta360 brand can get a little confusing in some cases. But if you've tried this new microphone, it is very affordable. But if you've tried it, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts were. I haven't had the opportunity to play with it, but I'm gonna guess because of how these manufacturers work, it's gonna sound a lot like the Lark M2. And in other news of products that Insta360 is coming out with that are a direct competition with DJI, and if smooth footage is more your game, then the newest Insta360 Flow 2 gimbal uh, is 109 bucks. It's a pocket stabilizer with premium tricks. So you get features like Deep Track 4, NFC smartphone pairing, and a battery that runs for 10 hours. It will also charge your phone in the field. You know what else will do that? This guy. This is the Hohem M7, which I am in the process of reviewing, and uh, it's gonna go in the Instagram giveaway. 
So now Insta's gimbal has got the expected expanding selfie stick functionality. It's got a built-in tripod, supports obviously their new mic air, and it's designed specifically for kind of fold down and light on the go shooters. And the Flow2 app brings some pro touches, including a teleprompter mode for easy scripting, smart framing tools so that you can get that golden ratio in place and a whole suite of tools for edits and auto polishing so that you can send them directly off to your social media platform of choice. So what this gimbal skips over the pro model, that's $159, is the rear selfie mirror, the tracking LED light, it doesn't have 360 panning, and it doesn't work with Apple's dock kit for native camera support. So you're limited to the Insta360 app unless you get the $20 tracking add-on. But realistically, if you're just making family videos, like travel vlogs, stuff like that, social clips, this is a pretty decently feature-packed gimbal for 109 bucks. It balances pro capabilities with a price that doesn't put it completely out of reach. Okay, one more update. Uh, another company that's getting into the same market that DJI is in, the not drones, no one wants to do drones. Everybody just wants to do all this other stuff. If you've been in the creator sphere at all, you've seen Atomos, right? They make uh, recorders and monitors. Well, they just announced their own microphone, the Studio Sonic Shotgun Mic. Now it's aimed at pros, filmmakers, journalists, YouTubers, anybody who needs flexible design and connectivity. It handles both wired and wireless, USB-C for digital devices, wireless 2.4 gigahertz up to 100 meters, 20 meters in crowded spaces, they claim. And specs include the standard 48 kilohertz, 24-bit super cardioid capsule with a rechargeable battery capable of up to eight hours of wireless or 50 hours when plugged in. You get both digital and analog outputs with a locking USB-C connector for rock solid attachments to things like Atomos recorders or compatible cameras. Everybody seems to be in an ecosystem play. The body is all metal, it's shielded for harsh conditions, and in the front you've got an OLED display, manual gain controls, a 75 hertz low cut or a 150 hertz high cut filter, as well as a high frequency boost, all meant to keep vocals clean in challenging environments. Latency is under 20 milliseconds, so it should be real time for almost any use and monitoring is direct and reliable. Now at 250 bucks, it's squarely in pro territory, but if you're already in the Atomos workflow, this really is a pretty decent addition. The company says that this is just the first of many audio focused releases to come. But as always, if you wanna support what I'm doing here, consider becoming a channel member. You'll get access to exclusive resources like LUTs presets, highlighted comments, members only live videos, and early access to new uploads. If you're looking to book a photo or video session, all the details are down in the description. While you're down there, there's also all of my gear links, including my 2025 content creators list, which is for folks who are trying to get started. Now, those are affiliate links, so if you pick something up, it does go to help the channel. As always, the easiest way to support the channel is to just hit like and subscribe. That goes a long way. It's also free, but it does help quite a bit. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.